Ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker is a, a man who works with a, a lot of people in this community, and, and sadly, these are, are people who don't have uh, enough food uh, every single day, and that uh, is uh, something that is a reality. It's a sad reality in our community, but uh, there are people, there are families, there are um, individuals in Calgary that, that go without enough food uh, in their fridges and in their cupboards. And the next man uh, speaking is someone who is trying to meet that challenge, meet that need, uh, and is uh, truly, uh, I think, an inspiring and visionary Calgarian. Um, he has moved his way up through the, the, the food bank uh, organization and leads the charge on trying to address hunger uh, in our community. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Mr. James McCara. Hi, my name's James. Given the people earlier, I got nothing. Thanks for coming. <laughs> uh, let's see, I want to drive a tank. I want a Guinness Book of Records. I want to fly. So I'm a kid who, when I was young, jumped off the garage roof with a green garbage bag. It's all I needed. Right there off the roof, I'm going for it. Now, subsequently, we've seen other plastics used. They're small garbage bags, white ones that you see nowadays. Some have handles. I'm sure that's probably better because as soon as I left the roof and the plastic bag inflated, it left my hands immediately. I have no upper arm strength is what I determined as gravity took over. So there I am plummeting earthward, wondering, is this really a good idea for me to do it? And in my mind, I was young, but the only thing I could think of was, you know, it is a sandbox, it might be soft. Failing to remember, of course, that when you're a kid and you're making things in a sandbox, you tend to want water because sand, when it's dry, really doesn't make things. You know, it just sort of goes whoop and then goes whoosh. And you go whoop and you go whoosh. You add a little bit of water and that makes it really nice. It's got a bit of a crust and things like that. If you get a lot of water, you're one step off cement. So, um, who am I? I'm here to do the serious stuff. Um, I have nine pages of yellow notes. They're all in really small font, and I'm, I don't have PowerPoint, so I'm just going to hold them up and point. If you have any questions, um, it sucks to be you unless you can get closer and actually see what I've written here. First of all, and more than anything else, thank you very much. Um, thank you for Adam. I had the fortune of meeting Adam years ago in about 2000, 2001. He was with the Calgary Economic Development Authority, and he was this weird guy when he was talking about economic development actually connected it to being a better city. It wasn't just about being more money. And I thought, you know, that's very interesting. And we've bumped paths every now and again as we go through. So I'm often amazed why he isn't up here rather than me. So Adam, I'd like to introduce no. Um, I wanted to do that. Thank you for the chamber and all it does. The chamber is a very interesting animal. In the city of Calgary, it has morphed so many different ways, and yet it is often seen as the epitome of what Calgary stands for. Can we wear white hats? Sure, let's wear white hats. Did anyone in history wear white hats? We're not too sure, but let's do that right now. Okay. We need a brand. Many people have come to little ideas like that. So everything that we've heard this morning, I'm blown away by. And I have a time limit, so I'll be quick. Uh, one of the fun ones. Do I have a Guinness Book of World Records? One of the interesting things I've learned about this today you are squat unless you have a Guinness Book of World Records. <laughs> I have one. World's largest food drive. 500 and something thousand pound. No, you can't clap. It's not mine. I didn't do it. I just stood there and went, woohoo, I'm the cheerleading squad. Um, what happened was, when I started as a public affairs manager in Calgary at the food bank, the food bank was changing. It was going from an organization that was very intrinsic, um, a lot of people getting together, talking about how it would be great if we you know, fed all of these people and, and we were out of business type thing. But it was always very manager focused. The board were managers, the volunteers were managers, the managers were managers, the staff were managers. Everybody was running around managing things. And it kind of lost the idea of, well, what were we here for? We knew we had to feed people, but there was this palace revolution, as I called it and we moved to a world of governance. And so with that governance came responsibility. And when I was hired, I was second choice. There's nothing better than going to, a, you know, hey, we'd like you to come help it, you're second choice. Really? Thank you. 
Um, that really makes me feel good. Not that you want me, but that you couldn't get somebody else, and then, you know, there we go. I'm CEO now, and I think it was a fairly good pick. Um, one of the things that comes with that, however, is knowing that when you want to build a relationship with the city, my rule was pick up the phone and say yes. Really? Is it that difficult? Nope. Pick up the phone. Hi, how are you? Good. Yep. You want to do a citywide food drive? Fabulous. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Click. Crap. Um, so now Monica Brink, who was the person who actually picked up the phone and said yes to a citywide food drive, no one had ever done it before. She comes down the hall. She wanders down the hall. And she says, I think we're in trouble. And I said, why? Well, I just said yes to a citywide food drive. Hmm. What to do today? It's only 300,000 houses in the city of Calgary, municipal area, uh, the number of volunteers required to be doing this. Did you manage to ask if there were any volunteers or somebody else would like to help with Like, it's not one person. You know, Mrs. Smith didn't phone and say, hey, I'm going to do a citywide food drive. I know it'll take me about four years to canvas all the houses, but I'm going to do it. Monica said yes, and we did it. 500 and some thousand pounds of food later, it gave us the indication that Calgarians believe in their city. That's what this is about. This is about believing in your city and believing of what's going on. So I wrote down here today all the things that I'm supposed to tell you, and I'm going to give you a few of the things. So my first question is, and it comes from my daughter. When my daughter turned one, we had a birthday party. And my birthday party, you get a video camera, and then you do stupid things because all of your friends are all in their early 20s. Well, today, actually, they're all in their early 30s, but when I had kids, we were all in their early 20s. So my brother picks up the camera, and he says to Caitlin, things will be different when I'm king of the world. And that was a very interesting statement, because then he proceeded to say to Caitlin, who was just one, there are things you need to know, and I want you to know what happens when you close the fridge door. You should not have to go through life wondering whether the light goes out. So he took the video camera, and he put it in the freezer, and he closed the door. And he opened the door, and he said, that's just your secret. Guard it with your life. So that's where I started. I said, what would happen if I was king of the world? Now, the things that I've gone through since then, I've learned about everything. I am eternally grateful for all the people who have ever helped me get where I needed to go. I am eternally grateful for the boss who looked at me and said, you need to make a choice between your family and your career. I almost quit. What kind of SOB would actually say that to you. Actually, it turned out a very caring individual. Taught me a huge amount of what I know today. Taught me about the logistics. He taught me how you can move millions of pounds of food from one place to another. Me and Bob Geldof, just like this. I'm not a rock star, however. I've got no awards. I haven't been knighted yet. Never met him. But we have something in common. They did a Live Aid concert, they got a whole bunch of money, they bought some food, it went to Africa and sat there and rotted. Live Aid was a colossal failure because the food rotted on the docks because no one had thought that maybe we need some trucks to get the food to where it needs to go. That is one of the things that I look at as a life lesson. It's no good to have food if you can't get it to the people who need it. No one woke up this morning and said, hmm, what should I do today? I think I'll be hungry. Tongue in cheek, I've always said, if we could get a celebrity to die of hunger, food banks would be set for life. Because that's what we need. Really, you need that grasp. Food banks are not sexy. We're not going to cure diseases. We're not going to change the planet. No one's going into outer space. Unfortunately, food banks have become part of our structure. It's nasty. And I face that every day when I go in. Every day I walk to the food bank, I ride, I drive, everybody I talk to, you deal with the worst. You can't come in and say, hey, how was your day today? Really, I'm standing in line at the food bank. How do you think my day is? You know, it's not exciting. It's nothing that you're going to go out and, you know, hey, guess what? I've got my fourth food bank badge. Did you see that? I've needed it four times now. Isn't that great? How many you got? Yeah, you got none. Ha! Sucks to be you. I got four. Really? What do we celebrate around here? There is enough food in the city of Calgary to feed us. Period. That simple. I have a cousin just outside of Calgary. Not one stitch of his crops stays in Canada. 
I asked him, I said, Jim, what do you mean your crops don't stay in Canada? He says, I got a better market someplace else. It's not needed here. What? We, we got hunger all the time. There is enough food in Calgary to feed Calgarians. How we do it? That's the important part. Some things I've learned about that. Uh, we've talked about a lot of things earlier. One of my mantras actually comes from the yellow school bus. I don't know how many of you know Ms. Frizzell. Anybody know Ms. Frizzell? Okay, a couple of you. Good. Um, Ms. Frizzell is my mantra. Make messy, get mistakes, and learn something. So get messy. Get in there. Stop saying, oh, we can't solve hunger and poverty. Really? I inserted an expletive there. It's probably not kind. Yes, you can. Why don't you just accept the fact that we can feed people? Why don't you meet your neighbor? Hi, how are you? How many people know your neighbor? I do. I know the dope smokers next door who just moved in from the East Coast. This is their first house. They've got two dogs. They all speak French. It's a blast, literally. Nothing to do with Dr. Feelgood this morning. This is just a slightly different level. I've got a household of people on the other side. One is an RN. Another one is a, an LN, I think they are. And they're having a blast. They've got two kids. They, it's the two of them. I see f family come in all the time. The barbecue's going. I've got a car salesman on the third house down from me. They just put in a really nice uh, jacuzzi in the backyard. And you know when they're away because the music is pumping. And the kids are in the backyard. I've got a gentleman behind me who is actually works at a tire company. And he's very proud of it because it's him. That's who he is. And we talk over the fence and he feeds my dogs. So I've got a, a very generic family, a wife, uh, two kids, three dogs, and a hamster. I'm standard. I'm, I'm, I, I listen this morning to all the people here and I say, wow, um, can I leave now? Literally, because that's what it is. My journey is not special or phenomenal. I didn't wake up one morning and say, geez, I'd like to feed some people. Let's feed the world. No, I have a very serious thing. My, my goal, world domination. That's it. It's very simple. Um, I, I, I think it's very straightforward. You have a big, hairy, audacious goal, as somebody said. And what I want is world domination. This really gets people upset. That's not very nice of you, James. You have to be aware that there are people all around you who have less than you do and things like that. And I'm like, forget it. They can work for world domination too. Actually, for a while, I went actually back to the James Bond theory of management, which is I need a small island, a benevolent government, lots of power to run the lasers, get a couple of rockets up into space, some luscious beauties, always at my beck and call. Those were the things I needed. And what I realized was everybody else suddenly wanted an island too. There's only so many islands, folks, so I had to move back to world domination. It sounds funny, but it's true, because that's what guides me. I like people. I like to see people happy. I hate when people are not happy, because I always feel I have to fix it. And I deal with one of the most difficult subjects you can. We have no food. Nobody woke up this morning and said, geez, I don't have any food in my fridge. I think I'll be, you know, hunger insecure. Or, sorry, that would be hunger challenged. Isn't that great? We make all these words. Are you hungry? No, I'm food insecure. Really? Can't you just be hungry, please? No kid comes home after school and says, Mom, I'm food insecure. I think I'd like a snack. It doesn't happen. But you know what? When you don't have food... Oh, wait. Hold on. There's a whole bunch of people today talked about food. One of the other streams that went through everybody today has been, do you have Guinness Book of World Records? And do you have food? We all had food today. Anybody here not eat? Not seeing any hands. Okay, that's a good sign because we had food today. Imagine being somebody who couldn't put up your hand. No government that anywhere in Canada funds food. Period. It's that simple. Everyone talks about food. It's very important. We have to have kids having food because kids that go to school hungry do not learn. You know what? When the kid went to school hungry, it wasn't because the parent said, you can go to school hungry today because I'm not going to have, I'm just going to eat the food myself. I'm much more important than you are. Any parents in the room, have you ever looked at your kid and said, you can have whatever I've finished eating, you know, and, and, and just chow down? You know, you tend to feed your kid first. So can you imagine what's happening in a family where the kids have no food? Chances are the family is so far past having to make that decision that this is their last vestige of hope. 
feeding the child. And yet we focus on feeding kids. Oh, please give the kids some food. Forget that noise. Feed the family. Can you imagine what would happen if I was king of the world and we fed some people? Put it in an economic sense. How much economic loss has there been because you have lost your staff because they have had to stay home with a sick parent, a sick child, sick themselves because their nutrition has been incomplete? Anybody ever experienced that? Yeah, it's kind of nasty, but we don't talk about it. I'm home with the flu today. <coughs> well, actually, really, it's because I'm waiting for my next paycheck, and, you know, it's not going to work till then. Very simple question I ask a lot of people. Can your staff afford your product? This is not brain surgery. Are you, it, and it's not about living wage or minimum wage or any kind of jargon. Can your staff afford your product? Because if they're not buying your product, they're buying somebody else's product. If they're buying somebody else's product, you're not making any money. If you're not making any money, you're out of business. As soon as you're out of business, then they don't have a job. Really not that complicated in my mind. Make, mess, make mistakes, get messy, and learn something. I call them controlled failure. When we talk about people and what they're going to do, and somebody phones and says, hey, I want to do this, and the first thing you hear from somebody who heard it today is, you know what? You can't do that. Why not? There's no rules. There's no rules that say, I can't. Hey, watch this, ready? Good sound, eh? So there's a rule somewhere that says that when you're making a presentation, you can't jump off the stage. How many people have seen anyone jump off the stage? Okay, just did. Yeah, thanks, Vinny. I appreciate that. <laughs> so now, I, now I've got this microphone and the, the tech guys and the, the cameras are going nutty. And I'm going to ask you the next question. If you were king of the world, what would you like to see? I see a food bank. Back to economics. Economics of the food bank in Calgary. We are probably the second largest physical structure of food banks in Canada. We distribute this year $32 million worth of food uh, across Canada. We fed 147,000 people last year. We took 60,000 phone calls. We have 4,400 volunteers. Uh, we have 6% waste. We have shipped 3.2 million pounds of food to other food banks in Alberta and Canada because we knew we had a responsibility to get the food further afield. We don't do counseling. We don't do addictions training. We don't do interventions. We don't, you know, read to your, your grandchildren, although some of the people coming to pick up, we have this book place, and you can read books to your kids as you're waiting. We do food, and we do it very well. And everybody in the food bank, when they come in the front door, my office is directly left of the front door. I get to hear everything. And there are a lot of things I really just don't need to hear. Truthfully, there are. I don't need to hear about your exploits on the weekend. But because I'm sitting at the very front of the building, I also get to hear all the juiciness. I also get to hear that somebody said, thank you. How many times have you said to, some, to somebody, thank you? It becomes rote. Say thank you. That's it, mean it. Contact with that person and say thank you. And you know what, when you're on the reciprocating end of that one, don't say, oh no, thank you. Really? Enough of the platitudes. You know what, look at somebody, acknowledge what they've said and say, you're welcome. Because they want to hear you. This is about people. This is about the fact that we can feed everybody in Calgary. We can make businesses run. We can make our cultures run. Everything you see in Calgary is about food. And yet we have a food bank. Share your food, share your ideas. Do not accept the fact that there has to be a food bank. Come and get me. If you can put me, I call it job security. It's one of the greatest things I can ever do. A food bank job is job security because until somebody gets the intestinal fortitude to change some policies or somebody's life, there will be a food bank. I don't know what you guys are doing, but man, I'm set. 
kind of strange, isn't it? So my challenge to you and my if question, and a little bit about me, which is, which is nothing. If you want the real story, actually, I've lived in the Arctic. I've sorted food with prime ministers. I recently entertained a group of social workers from China who were looking at how poverty was being dealt with in Canada so they could deal in, with poverty in their own city. Um, yeah, I've met a couple of prime ministers. I've met some amazing people. I've met people who have used the food bank and who have come back and said thank you. When I needed you, you were there. That is their badge of honor. Because most people in Calgary, I will never see them again. And you know what? It's because they succeed, because somebody stops to care. I've lived in the Arctic. I've talked to chiefs during Aboriginal land claims. I've watched my daughter sit in a room of partiers and go, where's the guy with the blue shirt? Nihai to Adak, as my father-in-law would say. And, you, you know, Caitlin wanders around the party, she's looking around going, where's that guy in the blue shirt? I can't find that guy in the blue shirt. Well, the guy in the blue shirt was from Grenada. Grenada, I'm not sure. I've, I've insulted somebody or not, but there's one way to say it, Grenada or Grenada. And his skin was probably the color of the backdrop here. Her focus was on the guy in the blue shirt. She learned how that an Aboriginal man living on the street in Lloydminster can speak four languages fluently. Italian, French, Cree, and Slavey. But no one had bothered to ask him that until she sat down beside him one day in his drunken stupor and just talked to him as if he was a person. One of the biggest lessons I learned from my kids was also from my son. Reminds me all the time. He gets hauled into the office and somebody says, What were you thinking? And he says, I wasn't. Where do you go from there? He told the truth. So I look around and I remind myself of all the people that I've seen today and all the people that I will meet in time. I am forever ingrained. I, just, I, I do not begin to understand why it is that they have left such an impact on me. And my goal and my if is to ask of you, if there is no hunger in Calgary, think of what we could accomplish. Thank you all very much.